Welcome back to Tony's Board Life. Uh, we've got another advanced recon that we're looking at here today. We are looking at something I've been looking forward to getting. I, f I got to see a little bit in playtesting um, when it was first coming out. And so I'm really, really excited about this. But we have Into the Woods, the Battle of Shiloh, April 6th and 7th, 1862. This is part of the Great Battles of the American Civil War. So, Into the Woods is the eighth installment of the Great Battles of the American Civil War series. It depicts the pivotal Western battle, theater battle, of Shiloh, also known as Pittsburgh Landing. This is the battle in which uh, General Albert Sidney Johnston cast caution to the wind, launched a rebel attack in Mississippi, and desperate surprise to attack Grant's army of the Tennessee, before Buell's army of the Ohio could reinforce it. The novice soldiers and amateur leaders of the two similarly sized armies grappled desperately with what became the bloodiest battle in the war so far. Shiloh determined not only the fate of the Central Tennessee, but also that of the Army commanders. If U.S. Grant had lost here, their theater commander Henry Halleck would have been relieved him of duty, removing the Norse most valuable Army leader with dramatic effects on how the remainder of the war. If A.S. Johnston, Albert Sidney Johnston, had won, he would have regained a good part of Tennessee as well as reputation. He knew this was a desperate gamble and risk all, including ultimately his life. Into the Wood contains ten scenarios, both historical and hypothetical, ranging from small brigade actions on an 11 by 18 scenario map to the two-day battle played across the full-size maps. Experienced players will be able to play several small scenarios in one sitting, hypothetical scenarios including... The most likely what ifs, a last desperate attack on the landing uh, on the evening of the first day, a more effective Confederate development at the start of the second day, and a Confederate attack the day earlier, maximizing surprise. The game rules reflect many of the unique conditions at Shiloh, including Johnson's leading from the front lines, Union surprise, friendly fire, Confederate plundering of the camps, and the importance of the terrain and the movement of combat. So we've got this. Uh, a couple things. Dick Whitaker, Bill Brennan, Albert Smith, Robert McGowan, uh, Game Map, Charlie Kerber and Dick Whitaker, and producer Tony Curtis. So it's uh, Complexity is 7. Uh, suitable, so, solid, uh, su solitaire suitability uh, is uh, medium high. And I do agree with that. Uh, this system is pretty good. So let's get this. Let's get the shrink wrap off this and see what's inside. It's kind of a heavy box. It's got a good, good weight to it. Let's see what we got. Okay, the shrink wrap is now off. So let's open this up and see what we get. A good, solid box. Blah blah blah. All that blah. blah. Okay, battle book. So this has all the scenarios. Um, as well as individual rules. So it looks like battle events. Scenarios start really on page 13. So there are, looks like, well, random events on this one. Uh, so you're really looking at 10 pages of uh, module specific rules. Well, not too bad. And then we have scenario one the historical battle. Uh, introduction. Oh. We got our setup, our reinforcements, uh, Confederate reinforcements. And we have scenario two, sound the long roll. Scenario three, the morning action. I like the fact that they're smaller ones, a battle, so it might be it'll be fun. The Hornet's Nest, which is pretty cool. Uh, Road to Pittsburgh Landing. I think I'll be playing this one. I'll have to see. Uh, Final, Final Connor Attack. I'm pretty sure that we're going to run into a campaign game. The second day, that's eight. 
scenario eight. The two day variant. So kind of a, one of the what ifs. And the critical left flank. Mid morning attack on Stuart Brigade. And then Johnny has his way. Again, all the scenarios. So, it's pretty cool. Got um, <laughs> Godfather perform. So, designer notes. And so, yeah, so uh, 11 module specific rules, 11 pages. Then we have our standard rules, um, which is pretty cool. Um, you can download these. I, I printed out on PDF. The nice thing is their color. Uh, so, once you've really learned the system, it's not so bad. Oh, so we've got our informational counters. Ooh, ooh, they're coming right off. Oh, kind of like that. Okay, push it right back in. Huh, although that is, this is counter sheet five. So if that tells you how many counter sheets we're looking at here. Sheet one, oh, looks like we have all the Confederates. I do love these counters. I think these counters are really, really cool. Um, so I do love these counters. So we've got one, and then we have our, um, uh, the Union counters here. Oh, well, I guess, um, I have most of these. I have punched most of, I have punched a lot of these already. So once you get one set of the informational counters, you pretty much so are good to go uh, uh, with all the big games out there. So, you know, out of it, so you're looking at uh, three, four, and five. So two and a half sheets are informational counters. If you've already punched um, other games, you're not going to have anything real different on that one. So there's our counter sheets. Move them to the side here. Ah, let's take a look. What do we have here? So this is a map. That's a big map. And that's a big map. So, but the nice thing is, is we have these smaller maps, which is pretty nice. So this is scenario two, sound the long roll. And then this is six, Sherman and McClellan counterattack. Nice, small maps. Two turns, two turns. Great way to get into the system. Nice, easy way to do it. Player eight cards. We have two of those, of course, which is nice. So two player aid cards, which is really good. We have our terrain effects charts, again, quite a bit. And then we have our second disorder table. We have our alert schedule right here. For the April 6th scenario, if I remember right, a little bit of I did do a little little bit of play testing, not not enough to get any credit, but a little bit. Uh, when we play tested it, it was kind of we move forward, um, and the Union can't move anything until the Confederate forces get so close. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then you have some of these that you roll on, um, no matter what. So it's kind of cool. Uh, battle events. Ammo resupply, two of those. And then we have our turn track for scenarios one through nine. And then scenario 10. Okay. We have our Confederate activation marker sheet. Good. <laughs> There's nothing on the back of that. It always bugs me when you have something like this and then they decide to put something on the back as well. It's like, well, you just need to keep this out. So. Yeah, I like the way this is set up, by the way. This is pretty cool. This is really good. I do enjoy that. So then, well, are we already out? Yeah. So 2D10, throw those in the drawer. And then, eh, we'll take that out. It's beautiful, but not going to do it. So let me go ahead. We're going to get these maps set up so we can take a look at them. I won't be able to put them together because they're so large. But we'll look at the maps uh, all in all. Uh, with that and the nice thing is is that now I'll be able to get some counter trace and still fit it all in there uh, once I take that out so let me go ahead and get the maps laid out for you guys to check out okay so we have what I think would be yeah the north map 
So this is the northern part of the map here. We have the Tennessee River, Snake Creek. Um, so we have all our stuff. We have Pittsburgh Landing, uh, which is right here, which is a very important part. But we have the normal pot, normal half. They have the nice thing is the ammo resupply, and then we have the battle events chart right here. We have the time track, the day, kind of got everything here, which is really nice to see. Um, there are there's a lot of elevation changes here, so that's it's really nice. We have an elevation chart on the side as well. So we have our turn track, a couple of charts here, and then just a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous map absolutely gorgeous let's zoom in on it and then so we're looking at glover grover field right here low glover field clearly there's no r in there glover field just absolutely gorgeous just wonderful looking uh definitely a good thing let me go ahead and get the south map set up and then we'll go from there so we have our south map set up here so we have brown's landing and the upper landing here we have uh, Barnes Field. We've got just about everything here. Absolutely wooded area. So it's going to be interesting to see how this goes with definitely some slopes that we have to worry about, uh, particularly down in this area. Although, if I remember right, most of it goes that way uh, with the Union troops on the north map and the northern part of this map. So, kind of starting this way and going this way. It'll be interesting to see how it's all set up on that case. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be good. And again, let's zoom in on these on this map. It is just absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. I love the aesthetics of these maps. They they work out really well. And uh, what's interesting, these are the camps here. These are camps. And then we have a little um, uh, indicator here, flag here. So we have camps all over the place, which is really cool. So that it's there's, there's definitely some differences um, between this and what I've played in other games as well. Um, I've played uh, Twin Peaks, and I am still in the middle of playing Three Days of Gettysburg, and I have also played One Scenario of Gringo. Um, and it's neat because although the system's really the same, they do have a little bit of difference. So, But we've got our maps. And there you have it. We have our recon of Into the Woods, the Battle of Shiloh, April 6th and 7th, 1862. Series designed by Richard Berg. Game designed by Dick Whitaker. And produced and published by GMT Games. With that, everybody have a great day, and I'll see you on the next video.